What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Man, today we're joined by someone who has truly uh, inspired me over her career and her approach, her passion to the craft. Um, as somebody who's been my first love was journalism and storytelling. It's just been a pleasure and like a, a motivating factor just to see her work and to dominate and just so you know, leave her footprint in the field that she's in. Today, we are joined by sports journalist, host, and broadcaster. I mean, literally multi-talented Taylor Rooks. How are you feeling today? How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Oh, my goodness. What an intro. You just follow me around everywhere. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I truly so. appreciate that. I appreciate your words. Thank you so, so much. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Lovely. I appreciate you cutting out time. I know you're busy and moving, so I'm going to go ahead and get straight to it. So... Growing up, um, you know, you, you were able to see a lot of Black women in the sports journalism field and space, like Pam Oliver, Monica Pearson, um, and others as well. Can you kind of tell me what was it like to have that uh, passion discovered so early on? And can you kind of speak to how important representation is and was for you? Yeah, I mean, it was really the most important. You know, I think that when you're a kid, you have a lot of dreams of what you want to be in the world and who you want to be in the world and, you know, what you want your presence to mean to others. And the most important thing to be able to feel that is to be able to see something that is at least similar, you know? And I think I was really fortunate to, you know, grow up in a place like Georgia mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm right outside of Atlanta. So I was able to see, you know, people like Monica Pearson on my TV and always recognize and understand and realize that these dreams that I have really are in my grasp because it was a dream that Monica had and she was able to succeed and it was a dream that Pam Oliver had and she was able to succeed in it um and I just think above all else too with me being in the space it has always made me remember and think in the back of my mind that you never want to feel unrelatable to the people that look like you mm. because that is just far and away I think why you do it you want those people to understand that you guys are the exact same. You all have a dream. You have something that you want to do. And if you were able to get there and do it, then they are too. So that is what people like Pam Oliver and Monica Pierce and Robin Roberts um, meant to me. And I think that every, you know, Black woman in this space tries to be that same thing for, you know, other young kids that want to do it as well. I love that. Cause that's so important. That changes the whole scope of things. When you just see somebody who you relate to so much, it just makes things seem more possible than ever. So I 100% feel that, 100% agree. Now we talked about the greats and I would love to know as well, you know, for you, was there a certain point in your career when you officially were like, you know, I've arrived as a journalist. Like I'm I'm here, I'm this, I've got the title. I'm like in my career field, I'm actually making things happen. Like what was the, the kind of point where you realized that you kind of arrived? Hmm, no, that's a really great question. I mean, I think it's kind of twofold. I think first for me, it was just when I was realizing that when I would put out interviews, they would create conversation mm. um, because, you know, that's why you do the job. You want the work that you're doing to like make people think and, and be introspective and, and just think about things differently. And so when I was realizing that consistently my work would create conversations and debates and things like that, I felt that way. Um, but then when I got nominated for an Emmy, I would say I really kind of felt solidified. And I honestly hate that that's my answer because I think that in a lot of ways we put a little too much emphasis on these like awards and milestones and what they mean. But I think the Emmy nomination was more important because it means that your peers see you in a certain way. Right. And so to have that like respect and recognition from the people working in this space certainly meant a lot to me. Um, and just because as you, you know, you grow up, you hear things like getting the Emmy is the thing. Uh, so getting that nomination, I think, meant something to me, even if it shouldn't have. Um, it certainly did. I love that. I mean, it's, that's God's work. That's a testament to the hard work that you put in over time. So even though we try not to put so much into these awards and accolades, it's just like God's blessing to tell you, hey, this is you how far you've come. This is the hard work you've done. This is, you know, things to be proud of. So I, I love that. I still some definitely to be proud of. I love that. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, it's like, it's not that getting those things validates you. You know, you are validated outside of, of these very tiny, like, ancillary awards. But if anything, it's just a recognition of the work. And I think it's always important to understand that it is just about your work being seen. It's not about your work being valued. Like, your value is constant, regardless of if somebody wants to nominate you for something or not. Um, but keeping that at the forefront and just knowing there were people that recognized the work um, was important to me. 
Love that. I love that. Now, I want to ask you something because I think it's something I constantly think about and I always hear other creators as well kind of mention it. There's like a, a the love, like I said, for journalism, for hosting, for creating. What Where does that love come from? Like, What kind of keeps that love for those things that bring you joy and allow you to constantly kind of feed into um, where, where does that love come from and how do you continue to feed that? What is, what is it about that? I mean, for me, it's people. I really, really love people. I love meeting new people. I love learning things about people. I like being the person and the reason that someone else might learn something new about someone. And you'll never run out of stories and you'll never run out of people that have things to say. Things exactly. will constantly happen and you'll never run out of questions. So I think that is really just what keeps me going. The fact that this job genuinely is never ending. There will always be something that needs to be discussed and needs to be talked about. Um, and it's also really important to just create spaces where people feel comfortable and they feel like they aren't being judged. You know, your questions are coming from a place of pure curiosity, right? And wanting to genuinely understand other people and just being able to create those spaces and deliver that to others um, is what keeps me going. I love that. I have somebody who loves that storytelling piece, but it's always interesting to find out what makes people tick or what, what makes them kind of be fed by that. So I, I love that. Um, one thing I think I mentioned how you inspired me. I think a big piece of that is what you've done for your name. You know, you, your Taylor Rooks rings bells. It's the name by itself. It's not necessarily what's attached to it. It's the name that you created, the work that you've created, that you've lent it to other brands and other companies and things like that. I would love to kind of know how do you overcome those challenges in order to kind of have that, um, you know, how you cemented your name within this industry. Kind of how, what are the challenges that you've had to overcome um, for the value that you've brought and that you brought to your own self? Yeah, I mean, I I certainly just want to be my own person. Um, I mean, I'm in, I'm eternally grateful and thankful and just like blessed. These places want me to work for them. Um, you know, it's it's forever a gift that like I get to say, you know, I do features on MV and TNT Tuesday or that, you know, I do the features for Thursday Night Football or, you know, I have an interview show on Bleacher Report. Like those are things that are just, the gravity of that is not lost on me. I'm so thankful that that people have, you know, decided that they want me to be a part of, of their companies and, you know, of their networks. Um, and because they have given me, given me that platform to be able to be who I am fully and, you know, delve into other interests and do, you know, marketing things and brand things and be a whole person. Um, and I just always want, you know, when people are thinking of my name or thinking of my work, I want them to understand that, she's not just one thing. Like, I feel like I could interview anybody in any sport, in any discipline, in any medium. Um, and so I try to just kind of have that guide the decisions that I make, um, which in turn, I, you know, I, I think helps to, helps what people think of when they think of me, but I'm sure there are, I mean, I don't even know how much time you have to talk about, you know, the challenges that come with when you wanna live, you know, live your life in that way. Mm -hmm. I have made like very conscious decisions and had to sit down with myself and ask who exactly I want to be in the space and what that looks like. And I try to have that, you know, guide the choices that I make um, because I'm somebody that I think kind of hits a bunch of a bunch of different spaces. And I think for people, eventually they're kind of like, well, OK, does she do sports or what does she do? And that like they maybe don't understand that. And that is a challenge. But I just think I, I tell myself all the time that me doing all that other stuff really does lend to the work. Like the work is always the main thing, but being like a figure in the space, I think makes people trust me more when they sit in the chair um, because I feel familiar to them, if that makes sense. And if that answers your question, I'm not sure if it did. No, it definitely <laughs> does both. It definitely does both. I mean, you say you're, you, you created a, a, a name and a lane for yourself to where, you know, you're able to excel in the things that you constantly do but then at the same time like it's nothing for you to do something else and still bring that skill and still be great and at the same time I think the biggest thing too is authentic like you're you're, you're being yourself you're not you know having those sit down conversations with yourself you're allowed to understand yourself and know what you want to do before you go into something blindly and now you're trying to figure out do I know who I want to be or am I just attaching on to the things that I've seen or the people yeah. that I inspire so like it, it's totally answers the question 100% Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> now, um, also with being community voices, we are also donating to the charity of the Best Side Foundation. We donate in 5K. For those who don't know, Best Side Foundation's mission is to inspire, expose, and foster the development of low-income youth in the field of photography through creating programming and hands-on experiences. Um, its founder, Raven Bean, 
Raven B. Verona, who is set to break the barriers of creating being a privilege in communities like hers. Um, Taylor, I would love to kind of just know, we talked about the things that you've accomplished in your career so far, and I know you're still still going, still cooking, still creating and things like that, but I would love to know kind of how important is it for you to always kind of help open the door and lend a hand to those who, you know, share a similar passion to you or how you did as a child as well. Yeah, I mean, I am a really, really big advocate for just teaching in general. You know, one of the things that was really important to me when I was entering the space is so many people would just answer my questions. They would let me talk to them and just figure out how you navigate this world and this work. And that was the most beneficial thing for me. So every week I will take phone calls with students, you know, men, women, black, white, just students that want to learn. Uh, they want to learn about sports journalism because I think that just giving that knowledge is the best thing that you can do. Um, like I'm a big, big believer in each one, teach one. You don't really know what this is like if you don't have somebody that you can reach out to and just ask those questions. So, so many things I think just begin with the knowledge and the education and feeling that you are equipped with the right preparation to step out into this world and, and do good work. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I, you know, I wanted to pick the Best Side Foundation. Raven is one of my absolute best friends. She's so passionate about the work. She, like she said, in, you know, the mission, she wants creativity to be something that is open to everyone. You know, it shouldn't be based on how much money you have or where you're at. It should literally just be about your mind and, you know, what is in your spirit and being able to put that into practice. So she goes to schools and she works with kids. She lends her talent. She tell asks them about their talents. And so I just think that's the best way that you can reach young people is having them see it, um, but also being able to talk about it. So I wanted to to pick that just as a really good example of, you know, this very immersive type work that we can all do um to help others mm, that i 100 percent agree with you and it's, it's awesome to hear that you are you know behind the scenes or even people know you're doing the work and helping people and still just giving back that continuous cycle of like progressiveness and progression and positivity that's super important so that's, that's amazing um i want to transition a little bit we also know we're you know we're halfway through we're, you know in international women's month and um for me as a black man, I've always also understood that, you know, black women go through a lot of struggles in life um, and they go through a lot of struggles in career, especially in your field where it's known to be male dominant. I mean, we're seeing more women, we're seeing more women of color as well get into the field, but we know that there's still that fight, that struggle to go through and the challenges that everybody individually goes through. Um, I think there was an a podcast uh, called The Pivot Pod. Um, and it was mentioned that, you know, you said the way I look shouldn't determine how good I am in my job. And like, I could, like, that was, I, I was like almost snapping my fingers, clapping at that. Cause that is so true. And it's like a plight that black women have to go through women of color as well, have to go through, like, you know, they're not just seen as for their talents. They're seen like, you know, as objects first when it's not how it should be. It should be, you know, I am a woman, I'm a black woman. I'm here to bring my best, my authentic self and my personality, but it's, it's a hard challenge that you have to face. And I think I would just kind of love to know um, how do you navigate through those moments and how does it feel to now be the one who's, you know, you watch growing up, you watch those people who inspired you and now you're that person for others. So what is it like kind of facing those challenges, but then being that inspiration for the others under you to break into this space? I mean, my honest answer is that, you know, unfortunately, I think that that like mindset that people have is something that will last for a really long time. I mean, I'm sure that like it has gotten better over the years, but for some humans, it's like very hard for them to see people, you know, as like what they're doing in this moment, as opposed to what they are. Um, right. It's just this thing that like culturally and societally, you want to put people into these like buckets and you want them to fit into these like very specific boxes. And for some people, the easiest way to do that is literally just based off of how they look and what they are. Um, so it's a thing that you're battling forever. Um, and a thing that you are, you know, you're always just wanting to say to yourself, I need the work to be great. I need this moment to be really good so that they can at least focus on what it is I am saying. I think that women in probably every space um, experience that. What I always say is, even though that doesn't get better, I really do believe that you get better and mm -hmm. the people that are supposed to receive your work, receive it. Mm -hmm. And you can't really care about the people that don't. That is just a, a full-time job that nobody really has the time for. 
But I, you know, I do think that mentality is something that comes in time. Like when I very first started, I was very hyper aware of what people had to say about me. I cared very deeply about what people had to say about me. I would fix things about myself based on what like I saw someone said, because mm. you're when you're starting, you just feel like that's how it's supposed to be. You think you need every single viewer to like you, to want to watch your work and all these things. But as you progress and you understand that the thing that makes you good is you being genuinely exactly who you are, and if they want to get with the program, they can. And if they don't want to get with the program, they don't have to. That is really when I think the world opens up because you're actually being you. Um, so that's really just the advice that I would give about that in general. Like there's never going to be a time where everybody likes you. And there's never going to be a time where every single person sees you as a whole person, even though they should. So you you have to focus on seeing yourself as a whole person and seeing your yourself as worthy and your work is good and worthy and all of those things. Um, and then when you do that, all that other stuff falls into place. Mm. I love that. That's that's I don't even want to speak on top of that because that's just so powerful <laughs> and so true. I mean, it's, it's 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 a sad truth, but at the same time, you can't let you know those worries, those struggles, stop you from being great. You know, you can either you know keep on going and like be yourself and grow, or you can just stop and you know there clearly there's one option that's better than the other so for sure uh, those are the things that make you inspirational too like just being able to go through that and say that and be that just this means a lot so I, I appreciate you leading that advice and and, and uh, speaking on that yeah I want to ask you two more things I know I said you're busy so I want to ask you two more things before we wrap things up uh -huh. um you know I'm a 1992 baby myself so you know <laughs> going <laughs> to 31 this year step into my 30s last year love it when he's taught me a lot, a lot, lost a lot, gained a lot. Um, but I learned a lot about myself that I think is really the most important. I would love to know for you, you know, you've been doing your career for half your life. I mean, almost half your life, 11 years you've been into this. Uh, what is the biggest thing in your career and journey? What has it taught you about yourself that you will continue to take into your 30s? I would say that there is always more. Mm. that your idea of success has to be very fluid and that you never want your goals to be limits. Like one thing that I've really tried to stop doing is, you know, people will say, well, what are you going to be doing when you're 40? What, you what do you want to be doing when you're 50? Mm -hmm. And I don't have this like exact thing that I say, like this exact network or exact show because that is a limit because what I'm doing at 40 could be even bigger than what I thought in my head because what I have done at every step has exceeded what I thought I was going to do. Mm. So I think that your guide more so has to be like your talent more than just like you being set in your mind because like sometimes your mind like traps you too. So I would just say that there is, there's always more and you have to be open to that more and people aren't just one thing. People are multiple things. And you should try to foster like, you know, those talents and those characteristics that are in you as much as you possibly can. Because this idea that like we can only be one thing is completely false. So I would just say, I've learned that there's always more. And if you really dedicate yourself to things, you genuinely can do whatever. Like I believe that in the bottom of my soul that every single person can do whatever they want to do it might take time and it's going to take like some luck and it's going to take advocates and it's going to take hard work and all these things but I believe like that we are here and meant to do those exact things that we want to do so I have learned that about myself but it's the same way that I think every single person can learn that about themselves so that's probably my answer mm, I'm about to put that in my journal today goodness <laughs> That was good. I mean, you, that really spoke to my spirit in a way. You said just being, not letting, putting those limits on yourself and like just using those as guys instead. That's that's a big, it's a big gym there. I appreciate that advice. That's, even that's, when there are big limits, there's still limits. Like even if it's like a big dream, it's like there's probably even more than you thinking that, but you think that you've reached the finish line, but there's like so much more behind you, but you just stopped because you felt like that was the end. You know, mm -hmm. like when I was, when I was um, in college, I'd say, well, oh, my goal is one day I want to have my own show. But then I got that show on Bleacher Report when I was, I think, 26. 
So I'm like, well, this can't be it. I mean, I'm 26. There has to be more, you know? So it's like, even just saying I wanted to do that thing specifically was a limit because I reached it. And then I said, well, what's my new goal? So now my new goal is I just want to go as far as my talent can take me because I don't know what that looks like. And I want to be open to that moment um, whenever it comes. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's like, why is the sky had to be the limit when there's more than the sky? Like, I love that. I yeah, totally for that. sure. Now, no, I, like that. I like that. <laughs> <Right? laughs> well, I stand good up high level. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to ask you one last question. Um, and I think it's definitely something to think about probably as you go into the next, you know, further into that, that chapter of your 30s. Um, not, to, not to keep reminding you of your 30s. I know people like don't want the age. Thing. I know. I love it. I like being 30. It's fine. The goal, the goal for people who don't know, the goal is to get older. So, yes, yes. Not, you know what I mean? That's the whole goal. People tend to forget it sometimes. But so and I, I lived a life in my 20s. Like, I don't have to turn back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, speaking of turning back, I do want to like, ask my last question around that, right? So like, lastly, if you had to pass one quote, one thing you would say to that little girl who was interviewing her Hall of Fame uncle, Lou Brock, what would it be? What would it be? You don't get one thing. (laughs) One thing. I think I'd say, okay, one thing, it was two things. Let me think of one, let me consolidate it. Or you can get two. If you if you can make it happen, you can get two. I'll let you slide. Okay, I'll do two. One is short. I think my the first thing I would say is keep talking. Mm. That sometimes people try to silence you. I think especially like when you were a kid. I was lucky enough that my parents wanted me to talk. They wanted to me me to be outgoing and be all the things that I am. Mm-hmm. I think we have to foster children's voices and like make sure they understand that what they have to say is important. You know, I was that like annoying kid that was asking 80 billion questions all of the time. And it's easy to let the world make you quiet. And so I would just say, please keep talking because like your voice is your power and what you have to say is what's going to propel you in your life. So that's to keep talking. But then secondly, I would say that you do create your own reality. Hmm. And, you know, because when I was growing up, Obviously, there was Oprah, who was like the quintessential interviewer. Like that was what I did with my mom was I sat down and I watched Oprah. But when I would watch sports, a lot of the times when I would see, you know, women, men, whoever, it was like you were a host, you were a silent reporter, you were an analyst. Those were kind of like the three roles. But like, I know that what I love doing above all else is interviewing. And so I was like, I want to be an interviewer. That is what I want to be known as. It's how I interview people. Even though I love hosting, I love silent reporting, I love doing all that other stuff, nothing fuels me like interviewing. Mm. And I wasn't really seeing people in the space that did strictly interviews, but I didn't want that to stop me from making that my thing. So I just wanted to create that lane for myself. And I think everyone can do that with whatever lane they want. So I would just want, you know, young me to know that this can be what you're known for doing, you can do the thing that makes you feel the best. So yeah, I'd say keep talking and you can create your own reality. I love that. I love that. That's I'm not even gonna speak on I'm not even gonna speak on top of that. I'm gonna let that breathe. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for joining us for episode of Community Voices. I appreciate you. Uh, like I said, I'm honored. I am this is just this conversation has motivated me even more than your career already does. That's so I very appreciate kind. you. So thank thank you you again for tuning in. Thanks for everybody else locking in, tuning in with us, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you a thousand percent. Like, I I wanted to make sure I said that I am somebody who has been in love with storytelling since I was a child, and I can relate to that same passion, that same spirit that I've been feeding on my life, and then figuring that out too. So you said a lot of things that did genuinely speak to my spirit, and I appreciate you for that, and I appreciate your time. No, I appreciate that word. It's truly, I thank you for having me. Thank you so much for donating all the things. I'm, I'm really happy that we did this. You have a great energy. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hopefully we work with you soon in the future. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hope to meet you in person. Thank you so Sounds much. Good. Appreciate <laughs> you. And thank you as well, Victor. Oh yeah, bye, Victor. Later. <laughs> <laughs>